again and a welcome. In today's video I'm going to be turning this smallish oak burr into a bowl. It's about nine and a half, ten inches across its widest part here and about two and a half inches in thickness. I've got it mounted on a worm screw with a backing plate so I didn't want to go in too far and uh, it should make a lovely little bowl because it's got some beautiful figure on it and hopefully that will show through. Without further ado, let's get turning this small oak burr bowl. I'm going to be using my Simon Hope Cryo half inch bowl gouge and uh, speed is around 520 rpm. Nice white cuts to start with just to start seeing what we've got. Um, I think for the newer turner, it's um, worthwhile mentioning. What I've done here, I've taken all this fibrous bark away and it's left this lovely pippy, pippy burr here, all the undulations. It does take time. I use an old chisel, um, a screwdriver, old screwdriver, wire brush, and any means to my disposal to get into the nooks and crannies and to expose all this and now if that what appears that darker there if if it is solid once it gets down to solid i leave it so there'll be a bit of a color contrast as well i didn't want to bore you with doing that because this has taken me about 20 minutes 25 minutes when i've done that i'll be sanding it um, and we'll take it from there Okay, so I've got to the stage now, I've sanded the outside um, to 400 grit. I did a bit more picking out and I got rid of 99% I think of the loose wood. Um, I sanded with the inertia sander, the Hope inertia sander on up to the foot and then I used um, a drill, drill power sander for the inside of the foot and it's looking rather good. So what I'm going to do now is spin them around in the chuck and we'll take out the inside and we should be left with a few holes and voids, hopefully, to add to the character. So we've got the bowl reversed now into the sea jaws in expansion mode in a mortise and we're ready to start moving the inside of the bowl. 
The thing is that I'm not sure how wide the rim is going to be. I've done a cursory mark there to see, and that looks about right, just under an inch. But what I want to do is to be able to incorporate um, these voids. So um, I'm just going to start hollowing out and see how it progresses. And I'm going to be using the Pope Cryo 3 8 bowl gouge. And uh, I've got the RPM up to around 800. So I'm not going to bother facing off the front because I've got the speed adequate. So let's just start and see what appears. Okay, so I'm quite happy with the shape of the inside now. It's about, um, it's just under um, three quarters of an inch, just on three quarters of an inch, because I want to keep uh, as much of this as possible. There's going to be quite a bit of sanding involved, obviously. Um, I'm happy with the shape inside. There are a few little ridges because of the um, way the, the grain goes every which way. You've got harder, harder and softer areas. I'm just going to use the Simon Hope uh, negative rate scraper just to iron out a few of those and then we'll get down to sanding. Yeah, that's done the job. Just some very light cuts, just to smooth out any peaks and uh, now we're ready for sanding and as I said I'll go up to 400 grit and I'll most probably use the power sander here and um, then we'll be ready for our finish. I'm going to be power sanding as I said and I'm going to be using the Simon Hope extension uh, arm here because it's quick release like the uh, short one but it also allows me to hold here if I want and it gives me a 
a lot of control exactly where I want to be and I have started to favour this method of doing the inside of bowls of late. The finish I'm going to use on this bowl is Hampshire Sheen Food and Toy Safe Danish Oil and I shall be applying several coats, three or four coats most probably. I've left it on the lathe here to do the first coat so that you can see how it will make the figure pop. So a good shake up to begin with which I've done. And Let's, let's see what happens there. Put a liberal amount on and let it soak into everything. I mean that is really bringing out the best in this wood. Well, you've noticed that I've left the, I've left the rim as natural as possible. We have some nice smooth flat spots and also quite a lot of undulations which all add to the character of this piece. I'm just doing this on here to give you an idea of what it looks like. And I'll take it off and put one coat on the on the back as well. So we can do that now, so that it gets in everywhere. This is just one of the uh, disposable brushes, and uh, it'll just give you an idea of what it's going to look like. So here's the bowl finished with one coat of Hampshire Sheen Food and Toy Safe Danish Oil applied, full of figure, full of character, love the back with all the pippy bits being exposed of the burr. Now if you look at this picture here, where my index finger is pointing there is a ring. Now that ring wasn't actually evident until I applied the oil because it wasn't evident after I'd finished sanding. So what I did was remount it into the chuck on the mortise and re-sanded that area, feathered it into the remainder of the surface, applied the oil and as you can see that ring has now disappeared. Now when you apply any oil or any finish in fact, whether it be sanding sealer even, it will highlight any imperfections so it's always worth checking that out and taking a bit of extra time to get rid of those imperfections to leave the surface as perfect as you can. Okay I will apply actually another four maybe five coats of, of Danish oil depends how absorbent the wood is in certain areas and then when it stops absorbing make sure you clean the excess off and allow it a few days to cure and then if you wish you can buff it up or indeed leave it as it is. Well, thank you very much indeed for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you very soon. Cheers now.